Both players are locked in long term now because Anthony Davis could have done uh, a shorter deal. LeBron James didn't have to do an extension. Uh, he's LeBron James. This is Anthony Davis. They could go on year to year deals essentially if they wanted to. But I think for both players, uh, getting the security of the longer term deal, locking in the years and the money. And now for the Lakers, they'll continue to con try to build around those two, bring in pieces. You know, they're not going to have the flexibility uh, to bring in. Uh, at least through free agency, a high-level star. But uh, they've improved themselves in this offseason. There's no question about that. Dennis Schroeder, Marc Gasol. Uh, but for Anthony Davis now, five-year deal, I'm told uh, there'll be an early termination option on it after the fourth year. So he'll be under contract one more year than LeBron James. Uh, and Anthony Davis will be uh, 32 years old, potentially, when he goes back in to free agency, young enough to get another massive deal, uh, you know, assuming he, he stays healthy. What, why LeBron in the extension now? Why not wait for LeBron? Yeah, it would, certainly it was an option to keep doing it the way he had done it, which was on shorter-term deals as he re-signed in Cleveland. You saw that. He did shorter deals. Uh, but I think it was locking in, you know, locking in that $80, $80 million plus uh, you know, when you get into your mid-30s and advancing, it's hard to imagine there's an injury um, or a scenario that the Lakers wouldn't continue uh, to pay LeBron James. Uh, but he gets that security now. He's locked in. Certainly, I think it speaks to a player uh, who is focused on his future in L.A., that there's, there's nowhere to go from the Lakers. And, and so uh, he's got AD locked in. You know, I think AD, listen, they're, they're, if you want to say they're co-stars right now in L.A., certainly AD is the centerpiece of L.A.'s future. Although with LeBron James, you, you get the feeling he's going to play as long as he wants to, that he'll be, uh, that he could still be at a high level into his 40s. Um, it, it's remarkable the way he's taking care of his body and how there's been little, if any, drop-off in his game. So, you know, the Lakers are in great position. They've got great role players around these two. And I think you've seen in history, uh, I think with the Lakers, especially when they're bringing in like the veteran minimum players, you know, they get guys who want to win championships who might take less money or take those one-year deals to come in uh, and be complimentary players on a team. Do it in L.A., do it at Staples Center, and, and do it with uh, two players and James and Anthony Davis who've shown that they coexist for all the problems elsewhere in the league, and you see it everywhere, star players who cannot figure out how to play together. It was as if Anthony Davis and LeBron James had been playing together forever from the moment they got together last season. Well, let's talk about star players that didn't feel like they can play together. I mean, the, the John Wall, Bradley Bill situation in D.C., and then you obviously have the Russell Westbrook and James Harden situation in Houston. Massive trade. Last time I remember, though, Woj, Raphael Stone and Tommy Shepard hadn't talked for a while. Where did this come from? They hadn't talked. They hadn't talked since prior to the draft, and that was up until yesterday afternoon. Russell Westbrook's agent, uh, Thad Fouché with Wasserman, uh, I'm told, got them talking, got them on the phone yesterday and, and helped to bridge, uh, bridge that gap. And once those two got on the phone, they worked through the details. You knew it was going to be a one-for-one one one trade wall for Westbrook. They worked out the details of that future first-round pick that's going to go to Houston, the protections on that pick. And, Jay, they had a deal done uh, within a couple hours. Uh, it's not typical a deal of that magnitude comes together that quickly in one afternoon, but it did yesterday. Well, do you, do you think, does that set the precedent for a guy like Raphael Stone, the general manager of the Houston Rockets, that he couldn't get the value that he actually wanted for Russell Westbrook? Will that be the same for James Harden? Do you think he then all of a sudden now looks to find a deal for James Harden, or does he hold on to James Harden? I think they're going to hold on to James Harden. And I think, you know, it's, it's easier to, if you're going to trade a Supermax player, you almost have to find another Supermax player to trade him for because they make so much money. Uh, and they were able to partner up and do that. And they did get a first-round pick uh, moving forward for him, uh, for Westbrook, certainly. And, you know, there, there's a gamble for both sides. And I think that, I think for both Washington and Houston, they want to keep Bradley Beal in Washington. They want to keep James Harden in Houston. 
They want to continue to build around those players, but they need these point guards to come in and fit in. Uh, they need Wall to regain his all-star form. You know, I think they need uh, Russell Westbrook um, you know, to find the chemistry with Bradley Beal. I know this about Russell Westbrook right now. Uh, one thing that's bothered him has been the, the, the talk out there about him as a teammate. He takes great pride in being a great teammate. And, and he, he's heard some knocks about that. And I know it's bothered him because it's something that is important to him. And you talk to the guys who played with him in OKC uh, in his career and, and Houston, um, on the rest of that roster, he came in and, and changed his game, learned to play off the ball. Um, it didn't work out in, from, in James Harden's eyes, but I know it's important for Westbrook to come in and find a rhythm with uh, – Bradley Beal and really fit into that team and remember he's going back to play with his old coach from Oklahoma City Scotty Brooks well I, I need a quick answer on this one how are you what are you hearing about the way James Harden is handling all this now uh, you know CP3 got injured Russell Westbrook has some injury issues with his hamstring during the bubble now you bring on a guy in John Wall who's coming off an Achilles injury DeMarcus Cousins coming off an injury how is he handling everything well, he's not committed to wanting to stay there. The trade, I'm told, um, doesn't necessarily change his view of wanting to move on. But the Rockets do have something on their side. They have time. He's still got two years left on his deal. Um, but, listen, they've given in Houston a lot of leeway, a lot of freedom uh, to, to James Harden over the last several years uh, under previous ownership, under the new ownership. Uh, they've really built an organization around him in every way, on the court, off the court. Um, and, but I know it's important for Westbrook to come in and find a rhythm with uh, Bradley Beal and really fit into that team. And remember, he's going back to play with his old coach from Oklahoma City, Scotty Brooks. Well, I need a quick answer on this one. How are you, what are you hearing about the way James Harden is handling all this now? Uh, you know, CP3 got injured. Russell Westbrook has some injury issues with his hamstring during the bubble. Now you bring on a guy in John Wall who's coming off an Achilles injury. DeMarcus Cousins coming off an injury. How is he handling everything? Well, he's not committed to wanting to stay there. The trade, I'm told, um, doesn't necessarily change his view of wanting to move on. But the Rockets do have something on their side. They have time. He's still got two years left on his deal. Um, but... Listen, they've given in Houston a lot of leeway, a lot of freedom uh, to, to James Harden over the last several years uh, under previous ownership, under the new ownership. Uh, they've really built an organization around him in every way, on the court, off the court. Um, and